So when I'm here on back heel and he goes to move my foot, I keep it strong. Now I extend my body away as I take my right arm and I shove it through, just like so. Let's look at that again. I get behind and inside the elbow. And now I want to make sure that he's not able to pummel his elbow inside my arm. So something Ant might do, he might take this hand on my wrist and use that to pummel his elbow back in. Go ahead. Yes. And now he can turn and get his elbow between me and him and everything's unraveling again. So I get underneath and inside. If I feel like he's going to go to try to control my wrist, I shoot my right arm deep into a claw grip. Now when he goes to free that elbow, the claw grip makes it tough. If he still goes to peel my hand to deal with the claw grip, I latch onto the lapel, just like we saw before. Now when he tries to free that elbow, he cannot. Now I scissor my legs. I take my arm up over my head like so, so I can turn belly down. And I'm up into this arm triangle position. Now if I wanted to, I could finish with an arm triangle submission here, or we could, this is what, what, this is what position? This is just like we were in when I finished the ratchet. Right, when I was here and I walk, 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 and I move my head, same position. So I can start using this to come up. And I could go right back to the back with this too. We have to learn to minimize the amount of damage done with the escapes. So let's go back to the wall. We have to minimize the amount of damage done. He escapes. He's starting to beat the hook. I pass my right leg over to make sure he doesn't capture me in half guard. That's usually the first thing I do. I usually do that before the elbow. As soon as, as, soon as he clears this hook, my foot follows. My feet never separate. My both feet are on the inside or both feet are on the outside. I don't want one in one. So when I'm here and he moves this foot, my right foot follows. My feet move together. Back healing. Now I need to make sure he doesn't get that elbow between me and him. So as he works his escape, as he moves his upper body away, I pummel this arm behind and inside the elbow. And I start reaching deep as I pull my left arm out. I can latch on with a claw grip. Or if he starts challenging my hand position, I grab the lapel. He goes to escape the elbow. He cannot. I come up. And now from here, I can either hang out to the mount, I could go for an arm triangle, or I could come back around to S mount, keep more seat belts, take it back again, etc. So, there's a lot of information, but all of it very important. Again, the basic ideas here. When we're in a pin, you're never going to be able to hold down an intelligent opponent with one variation of a pin for extended periods of time. It's up to you to learn all the variations of these pins, the various ways we configure our lower body, and the various ways we configure our upper bodies. Learn to move around your partner to accommodate for their escape attempts. And as you're moving around them, you're always keeping three targets in mind and two directives in mind. The targets, control the hips, control the head, control the elbows. And the directives, stay inside the knees and control the hips, stay inside the elbows to stay tight to the head and shoulders. You guys can do those things through dynamic pinning. It's gonna be very difficult to get you off and get you back in guard. Thanks, guys.